Welcome back. Upper Hutt Posse were the original fathers of New Zealand hip-hop. 20 years ago, they burst onto the scene with their angry indigenous brand of rap, and in October they released a new album called Legacy. Earlier this year, Andrew Cogan found the Posse was still fired up, still political, and still with a point to prove. Joe sure, Cuts, this is it, man. UHP up up Posse in the area. Matukahi Studios, you know it. Still making noise, he's still not happy with all he's hearing. For me, I like uh, the, the hardcore lyrics, you know, lyrics that could be talking about, we could, you know, I'd expect more rappers actually to be talking about the heat boy, you know, to be talking about, you know, Don Brash, you know, he's a head, whatever. Just, you know, these sorts of lyrics, but they don't sort of end up coming out of a lot of cats, you know. Upper Hutt Posse will pull no punches with their new album. Pass it, cause you ping, pass it over, let's relish for my journey as my battle of Babylon soldiers. In tandem with MC Wire, what Hapita really thinks is what you'll hear. Māori sovereignty, Māori rights. Am I so different than everybody else, or what, you know? What about If I am, everybody needs to wake the f up and get with the program, because these politicians running this country are not doing a proper job. He formed Upper Hutt Posse in the mid-1980s. Stand proud. Kia ka. See it loud. Their 1988 album, Air 2, was the first ever Kiwi hip-hop rap record. The pioneer himself is pleased that hip-hop's on a high in the charts, but reckons some are copping out, too obsessed with bling and not the hard issues. That's why probably there's a lot of, lot of rap that comes out of the island communities, which is not as hardcore as Māori, but that's more accepted by, by Europeans, you know, who still run the system, who are like going, oh, we can handle this, but we don't like those ones over there who are talking about tino ranga tira tanga, and are saying, like, chase the white man out of here. Oh, we don't want that. But we can deal with these other brothers from the other Pacific Islands that aren't saying that about us. With the working title of Legacy, this will be the Posse's first album of new material in 10 years. The new generation of harpeters have joined the ship. Dean's 11-year-old daughter, Atahua, sings one of the tracks. Atahua is just a little reluctant to sing with Dad today, but if she's embarrassed... They can feel it, feel it, you know. Well, I'm feeling every bit the white boy. Do you still get the same buzz out of making a new record? Yeah. Music, man, it's music. You know, it's, that's, you can't help, you just have to do it. You know, it's in, it's in our blood. And his passions led him to Africa recently. He's making a music video and rapumentary about the lives of indigenous people there. As for his own album, it'll be released towards the end of the year. A-list, B-list or just wannabe celebrities know that putting up with media gossip is part of the job. But sometimes the line is crossed. A tabloid goes too far, the story's too embarrassing, the star sees an opportunity to clear their name and make some money, and so they sue. Olivia Kimber looks at this year's celebrity lawsuits. Spears, the latest celebrity to sue for libel the tabloid magazines that keep her famous. Brittany, how you guys feeling? Brittany wants 20 million US dollars damages from Us Weekly magazine after the tabloid ran a story in October about an alleged sex tape Brittany made with her husband. When she demanded a retraction, the magazine refused, so on Monday she went to court. Can we please not talk about my sex life anymore? Is that possible, please? Jennifer Aniston is another A-lister whose domestic activities have excited the tabloids. She's suing a photographer who took pictures of her sunbathing topless in her own backyard. Oh, come on! Look at them! Aniston's lawsuit maintains the paparazzo couldn't have got the shots without trespassing. The actress is seeking financial damages and a cease and desist order against him. But the photographer, Peter Brand, says Aniston shouldn't have got her gear off and nobody has bought the pictures anyway. Fellow actress Terry Hatcher did win her case. Oh yeah, I love my steak. <laughs> Alongside a photo captioned, Tasty Terry's Passion Wagon, Britain's Daily Sport magazine claimed she had sex with men in a V-dub van in her driveway. But the desperate housewife proved she wasn't that desperate and successfully sued. The Daily Sport now owes her substantial damages and an apology. You know that spending one night with me guarantees you celebrity. Earlier this
this month, Robbie Williams won an undisclosed sum from People magazine, which had published an article last year alleging that despite his womanizing reputation, the singer was secretly gay and picked up men in clubs. Can you feel me? Since the article came out shortly before Robbie published his autobiography, the singer's lawyer argued it looks like Robbie was about to deceive the public about his sexuality. And on the other side of the law, Anna Nicole Smith is being sued by the organizers of Live 8. I don't understand. People actually do not like me. Anna Nicole Smith has been drunk and disorderly on stage before. This was at the MTV Australia Awards. But the Live 8 organizers say they weren't expecting her to be so intoxicated and scantily clad, and they're suing diet firm Trim Spa, for whom she's a spokesperson. Dancing with Anna Nicole. <laughs> And yeah, we'll end it on that nice classy note there, I think. That's Headliners for Thursday. Tomorrow we rate New Zealand's most beautiful people as voted by themselves. And remember those showbiz moments that had us all jumping up and down on couches throughout the year? We do. Until then, from us, hey, Mai. Bye now.